blue crabs to stone crabs, she does it all. <laughs> a woman of many talents. Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are on the boat and we are about to head out to put out our first set of stone crab traps. I got my grandma, the crab and queen with us, as well as my dad, and this is our first time putting out stone crab traps, so it's gonna be something really new and I'm really excited. So let's head out and see if we can find some. Um, we do have five, but my grandma has one that she's going to put in a secret location on land that you guys don't get to see. <laughs> so we're only going to put out four. Like I said, we've never done this before, so I feel like there's kind of a learning experience to it. One, we don't have a lot of room to store a bunch of traps, and two, we've never done it before, so that's why we only have five. So now with the traps, you need to have a buoy that has an R painted on it for recreation, as well as your tag numbers, your name, and your address, which we have on the traps. My mom painted all of these buoys, so this is our color, so people don't get confused as to what traps that they're pulling. Hopefully no one's buoys are painted exactly like this. <laughs> Unlikely, but, so this is how you determine whose traps are whose. This is our little paint pattern that we have going on. All right, now as for bait, we've kind of been stocking up a little bit here in the freezer. So we got some triggerfish carcasses. We caught these in Panama City. So we're gonna put one in each of the traps. Next we got some tilapia carcasses. Victor went and caught these wild tilapias. We ate those, they were absolutely delicious, as well as the triggerfish. And now they're gonna go try to catch us some crabs. So we're really getting to use everything here. So we got a buffet going on. We also have some pogies, which Victor caught these a few months ago. We've had these in the freezer. Okay, so now we're gonna close these babies up. And I actually wanna get um, tie wraps too. Oh, so nobody can, so we know if somebody checks them? Yeah. All right, I'll go get them. We've actually had these traps now for a year and we had given mom one to use on land and it was a little too heavy for her to do on her own, so we decided to take the trap away from her, even though she was very sad. <laughs> she did catch two giants. She did catch two giants while she had it, but we decided to take the trap away from her because it, she actually got hurt pulling up the trap on her own. So the thing about these traps is currently, right now, they are very clean, and eventually they're gonna get really dirty because the season goes from October 15th until May 2nd, so they're gonna be in the water for a long time. But with these traps, I mean, your hope obviously is that you never lose one, but if you did lose one, which we'd probably be able to go and find it. But let's say a trap became a ghost trap, which means that it's lost, whatever, someone lost it. If the buoy were to come undone and it was just down there on its own, there's this piece of wood here. And you can replace this piece of wood after a couple seasons or whatever, for whatever if it gets rotten out. And this is where your fish and your crabs and whatever else can get out of if your trap does become lost and becomes a ghost trap. This would rot out and then they could escape out of there. And then they're getting in up here, right up top. You're hoping that they're not chewing, sneaking some food from the sides, but you want them to come through here. You have your lid, you have your two latches, and that should be good enough. Now, I'm going to put this um, zip tie on, just as a, so I know if someone comes and checks our trap, we're gonna know if the tie wrap is cut um, if the tie wrap's cut, obviously we know someone's messing with us and checking our traps. So hopefully that doesn't happen and just kind of gives you a peace of mind by putting the tie wraps there. So 
so now we're ready to go. Time to go figure out where we're putting these babies. Start her up. Let's go. Really? Now comes the part of trying to decide where we're Have putting Have you ever them. seen the person? <laughs> all of us are on the boat are like, should we put it at this spot, this spot, this spot? And since it's so new to all of us, nobody knows what a good spot is. And that's the neat thing that Brooke and her family, you know, they're taking on this endeavor of uh, stone crabbing is it's all going to be a learning experience and we get to share it with you guys. We don't know whether they like bridges or signs or deep or shallow or clean water, dirty water. It's all or new to us. They like or what bait? what bait they like or anything like that. I have one thing to say. I know a lot of you guys are local people, so if you're recognizing any of these spots, which I'm sure you would if you're local, please don't check our traps. <laughs> That's all I have know. to say. You'll know if they break the zip time. I mean, technically they won't know until after the video is posted about our traps, so we could move them, so <laughs> you never know. <laughs> People won't mug our traps. Right here? like the buoy is like all wrapped up in the piling so this should be interesting. It looks like it's not wrapped up. Yet. No it's not it's just around it once. Well, well there is fish. A blue claw and a fish. And a catfish. Yeah it does snake. Well at least we know we still have a little bit of bait. Oh, he's little. Okay. Right here, huh? See ya. First trap, one blue crab, one catfish, no stone crab. So hopefully we have a better look at the next one. Mom, Mom, what do you think? This is going to be the one? I hope so. <laughs> I think so. I think this is our lucky spot right here. We did a good job. Watch it, Mom. Take that. Got it. Got it? Got 
Nothing. Nothing. We are striking out. Yep, we are. Well, zero for two so far. We thought, <laughs> I thought the first one was going to be the one that definitely was going to have it. And then we thought this one was going to be the one that definitely had it. So fingers crossed for the other two that we at least, I mean, I would be excited to just get one. So we're loading up the second set. It's a combination of pogies, some tilapia. My dad just got off work, so we were going to check him after he got off work. And we are racing against time with this rainstorm that's supposed to be coming. So hopefully we don't get rained on. Yeah, it's pretty shallow from where it was. Yep, got him. Yes. Got one? Yeah. Okay. No way. Remember, I wanted this spot. I don't know. Is he big? I don't think I don't think he's too big, but he's a stone crab, so it's in the right direction. I think he's got a legal call though. Oh baby, look at this guy. Wow. We'll see. Okay, <gasps> so that's that's our lobster gauge, which is three inches, which is larger than it needs to be. So we're golden with that one. That's a keeper. Just for the heck of it, let's see what this one is. Oh my gosh, that one was close because it's two and seven eighths. This one, this one probably would have been legal last year. For sure, that's because that's a quarter of an inch there, a little less. This one would have been legal. So we get the, it's it's kind of nice just to take one of their claws anyway. You got the knife, bro? We watched Sarah Stanzik do this, so we're gonna try her method of uh, getting them to release their, their claw. Oh, look at that, it wow. works like a charm. And she always tells people, don't throw the claw in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do, it snaps off and you're like ready to go. So like my dad was saying, this one might have been legal last year. The claw size went from two and three quarters a legal size to two and seven eighths this year. And that's pretty exciting, our first stone crab of the season. Pretty awesome. And like my dad was referring to Sarah Stansig, the Stans fam on um, YouTube, they do a ton of stone crabbing. And so we watched their videos before we did this to kind of get a little idea of what to do. So that was her trick because you can, you can damage them if you don't know how to properly take the claws off. If you don't properly take off the claw, you can damage them by breaking this point. And this is a renewable resource and this will regrow if you do it properly. And you are allowed to take both claws if they were both of legal size. That's a go. one big pincher right there. I like that little trick that I learned from Sarah Stanzik, you know, so, you know, we, we haven't caught that many stone crabs, so I don't want to kill one, so if it's easier to stick the knife in that joint and, and then they release it, I thought that was a good little trick. It's the world's smallest stone crab. Look at them. I can't even pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? Yeah. Should we move this one? I think so. Alright, so we ended up getting one claw on our first attempt at catching stone crabs. And we're going to, we're going to move that last trap that we just put out, I think closer to the trap where we actually caught one. Um, obviously that seems like that's been the best area. But still pretty exciting that we caught one. You know, we've never done this before, so we didn't know what it, really know what it was going to be like. Oh, I'm glad we got one. Better than getting skunked. Last year, I gave my mom one stone crab trap to put behind her condo. And like the first time she checked it, there were two colossals in there. And I mean real true colossals. And she didn't know you were allowed to take the little claws. So she just took the one colossal claw off of each one. 
and that was right behind her condo. I, I had to take that trap away from her because um, the, the way it has concrete in the bottom, she was pulling it up over the seawall and she hurt her back. And uh, I, I took it and I drilled like 28 holes in it to make it lighter. But still, I, I never gave it back to her. I, I don't want to hurt her. She's, she thinks she should have it back. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to break it. <laughs> so we're taking her out in the boat and, and doing the, the lifting for her. All right, so it has been another three days since the last time we checked the stone crab traps. We're about to head out and check them again and we are getting the bait ready. And Vic, what you got going on? So if you're gonna go stone crabbing or any type of crabbing and you got a giant frozen bonita, make sure you thaw it out the night before a few hours. This thing is rock solid. No knife will do. I had to bust out the saw. And we're just trying to get through the middle of this thing so we don't put a whole bonita in one trap. We're gonna divide it into probably two or three baits. Is it? Might be. Look, there's there's no bait. Now we got a chunk of bait in there. This time I got my mom who joined us this time. And it is blowing like, what, like 30 miles an hour? Oh yeah. It is blowing so hard and it's gonna be blowing for the next like 10 days. And basically since we've been home from our trip up north, it's been blowing almost like the whole entire time. And if it's not blowing, it's been raining. I think it rained six days in a row. So we have been trying really hard to do things in this crazy weather. Kind of don't have many options to go fishing or anything like that. And we're getting low on bait. <laughs> we're really emptying out our freezer. So hopefully we'll get a chance to go out and go fishing so we can A, load up on bait, and B, get you guys some fishing videos. Right now it's blowing, so you gotta work with what you got, and we're going crap. Didn't need gloves for this one. There's a there's a stone crab. See him, Victor? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> a microscopic one. You can't even see it. It's right here. Really? Yeah, that's a stone crab. Oh, God. Yeah. We're not having much luck, <laughs> but. We've only gotten one stone claw, but you know, it's fun still doing this. Like yeah, we're going on a little boat ride with my family and yeah. it's still fun, right? Sure. And look, we have a beautiful sunset. Now it's almost gone, but <laughs> still nice. It's nice to just go on a boat cruise and if you catch a little dinner, then that's just the icing on the cake. But it's really just about, you know, having fun and trying something new. Not really like loading up the boat. I mean, that would be nice, but at the end of the day, you know, it doesn't really matter.
I've been editing this video now for a couple months and I thought it was gonna get easier but it hasn't so I just need to do it on November 8th 2020 which was just a couple days after the footage you guys just watched my mom passed away it was very peaceful but very unexpected you know she wasn't sick she wasn't in the hospital she just didn't wake up for church one morning and if you guys have seen my videos before you know how close my family is so this has been hard but i'm so thankful for memories like this video that i had with her and that i will always have so that's why i'm sharing this with you guys because you know i started something and i'm gonna finish it even though it's completely different than how i thought this video was gonna end my mom was and always will be my biggest inspiration she truly lived her life to the fullest and she was the most amazing person i've ever met and if you guys knew her or even if you just watched her in my videos i'm sure you you know got to see a little of that and i'm happy that i got to share even just the littlest bit of her with you guys so i made a couple videos in the past going crabbing with mama and that was one of her favorite things to do she used to wake up at four or five o'clock in the morning to go check her secret crab trap that she had and she loved catching crabs so that she could save them to have a big family dinner with all of us and that's just how she was she did everything for her family and for her friends so what you're about to see is us go check my mom's crab trap for the last time well this is the last time this trap gets pulled my mom loved coming here and checking her trap and then she'd text me every morning two throwbacks one keeper four throwbacks and no keepers every day we talked about her crab trap every day i um i i had such a good relationship with her i talked to her every day i'm gonna miss her a lot so the last the last pulls, two throwbacks. Is there a tie wrap? Good. There's a little string. That's it. My mom got a lot of enjoyment out of checking this truck. I redid this trap for her. The first time I gave her a, a standard one with a concrete bottom and uh, I had to take her to the emergency room she hurt her back pulling this trap up you know with the standard two inches of concrete in the bottom so then I took it away from her and she complained and complained she wanted it back so I drilled like I weighed it and it was um, 28 pounds with the concrete and all so I drilled a, like 28 one inch holes through the concrete and I would weigh it and I got it down to um, 22 pounds. And uh, I'm like, oh man, I can't hurt my, my mom again. I, I wouldn't give it back to her. And um, she, she was just relentless about wanting to do it. So it was her idea to put a screen bottom in and a light brick 
and we figured since it's tied to the seawall that that would work so that's what I did I it, she, she was a sportsman it was her idea and it worked it, it's light as a feather so I could give it to my 89 year old I don't know what she weighed she she probably didn't weigh more than a hundred pounds but she enjoyed checking this trap so I'm, I'm glad I I'm glad I put it together for her like this. We had a big family gathering for a memorial for Mama. Mama used to clean and freeze her daily crab catch until we had enough for a big dinner. We had planned to eat the crabs she had caught over the last few months on December 12th, which would have been her 90th birthday. Instead, we decided to all enjoy her last catch together. Before dinner, I thought it would be nice to take some of the family out on the boat to check the stone crab traps again. We still have only caught one stone crab in the traps. I don't think our area is very good for it, which we knew going into it, but we wanted to do it for Mama. As I had said before, it's not about the catch, it's about the time spent together. Tell us what you're doing. We made mini cherry pies and we're putting some egg wash on top so they're nice and shiny. Wow, look at that. How creative. <laughs> Good work, ladies. Stay tuned. The famous Chris family recipe for blue crabs. Olive oil, onions, brine's prepping the blue crabs, and then look at that, three whole heads of garlic. We're gonna wake it up. Now some locally made marinara from Belmontes. Squishing these whole tomato fruits. It's just so much fun. So, just, much, so much fun. Yep, to squish these. And uh, this is this has been a fun evening. We have uh, the most people I've ever cooked for. Cooking for uh, 20 tonight. We usually cook for 10. So we got guests from out of town, and it's gonna be it's it's been it's been nice. We made the same crab recipe we've been making with Mom's crab catches for years. Nothing would make her happier than seeing us all together. Well, I always cook my smallest crabs first and save the biggest ones for the last dish. And uh, since I usually serve 10 people, I, I cook 10 whole crabs at a time because that fits in my pot just well. But since I'm serving 20 people, I thought, how am I going to do that? So I'm going to I'm going to break the crabs in half. So I'm still cooking 10 crabs, but everybody's going to get a half a crab, and I'll have um, four servings like that. So we've got 42 crabs. So everybody will wind up with two crabs, and then we've also bought some. Um, we got mussels. We got clams that I gotta wash and some shrimp. So it should be a nice, nice marinara dinner. Here's my first batch of crabs going in. That's 10 crabs or 20 halves. Yeah, they, they fit fine. This is uh, my mom's last catch. That's what we're calling this dinner. Look at that. Nice hot steaming mom mom crabs. Best crabs on the planet.
Alright, everybody listen up. got the right amount of everything. So far, so good. Everybody's got a couple of mussels, a couple of clams, a shrimp. frequent questions I probably get asked from people is should I start a YouTube channel and my answer to them is always yes yes you should start one it doesn't matter if you decide after a couple of videos that you don't like it anymore or you don't want to do it anymore those memories that you made of something doing something that you love are absolutely priceless and I'm so glad that I have some memories with my grandma on video and so here are a few memories that are my favorite with my grandma as well as you know just simple little clips from dinners that we had together you know she used to watch all of my videos and catch and cook dinners will not be the same without her so i hope you guys enjoy family that's, yeah that's what counts we're, we're together okay my mom you're first wow thank you thank you thank you you're that's welcome. gorgeous and this is the best roast i've ever had in my life <laughs> <laughs> thank to it it's amazing. Mama, you want to say anything? I could just repeat everything you said <laughs> because there's nothing else to say. <laughs> it's so great. I, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. But that rice, I've never had rice like that before. Usually rice has no taste to it. But this I had seconds and I'm going to go for thirds. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mama. That is about the best fish I've ever had and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank I guess you. it's because of how it's cooked. I don't know, but it is delicious. Thank you. They've been, they've been wait, they've been. Your fans have been waiting for you, Ma. They've been commenting down below. They've been waiting to see you again. Yeah, they want you in more videos. <laughs> Hello. We got a visitor. Hello, Mom. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? I hope you're hungry. Oh, I'm hungry when I come here. With all this good food, God. You said, would you like to come? <laughs> How can I refuse this, this kind of food? You just can't do it. No. The rest of you are good cooks. Thank you, Mama. Boy, everything looks. Look at those tomatoes and cheese. How oh, beautiful. Yeah. What do you think, Mama? 
Fabulous world, as Fab usual. Thank you. How do you like it? I think it's outrageous. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Happy birthday to you. Yay! I don't think I could do it. <laughs> I'm going to say what I usually say. It's so good. I'm never disappointed when I come here because you're both good cooks. You know what to do with the stuff. Thank you, Thank you so much. Oh, can you finish all that food? <laughs> don't look like it. There you go. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Wow. We got a table full of people here tonight. A lot of good food, a lot of good people. Oh. She's good though, we got three keepers. We got three keepers, woohoo! It's not a bad haul at all. No. That's good. Maybe the season's coming back. <laughs> the wisest go first. That's right. Well, I was there right. There we go. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I love it all, thank you so much. I think that was the best lobster I ever had and ever will have. It was just astronomical. There's no way of describing it. It was so delicious. I think I ate more than anybody else here. <laughs> Never got filled up. Or I was full, but I kept eating. It was so good. Thanks, Mom. I hope you make it again. <laughs> Here we go. Who's the lucky first plate? Mama. Oh my God. You got a big plate there. <laughs> I'm with my mom, my dad, and the crabbing queen right here. This is my grandma. This is my 88 year old mother, and she's going to provide the catch and cook for this dinner. She's been crabbing on the side. She's got a hidden little trap that she's got a little spot that she goes to check first thing early in the morning. She pulls it up and um, she'll text me a text saying five throwbacks and one keeper this morning, or nothing in the trap today, or two nice beauties. So she's been catching these crabs and she catches them and cleans them and freezes them because we're probably gonna have a dinner with 10 or 12 people. Our recipe is gonna be like a New Jersey style, a red spaghetti sauce, and it's pretty amazing. Look forward to that catch and cook. What do you think they like more, fish or chicken? I have no idea. <laughs> I never asked them. You never asked them? <laughs> I'd say, you know, we keep all three then. Does that so because <laughs> I was getting bit with them. Really? Oh, That's not good. I know. Well, ain't gonna kill me. <laughs> just, just didn't feel good. But we are ready to have a big family crab dinner. We haven't done this in a long time, but this is my grandma's favorite thing. She loves going out there. <laughs> she loves going out there and catching crabs. <laughs> so take over for her. No, this is the best part. <laughs> yeah. 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 This yeah. Is yeah. Is so touching. <laughs> this is what she lives for. Oh, Brooke, this is so touching. Bring us all together. And she goes out there every single day trying to catch crabs just to have a big family dinner. <laughs> so thank oh, you, Mama. I'm going to cry. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Family. That's okay. Family. Shout out to Mom Mom for bringing us all together. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, I think you guys saw Brooke's reaction. You can't fake that. And I think that's the way everyone kind of feels that everyone's together. And you have an amazing woman, 89 years old, right? 88. Gonna be 89 in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> She's 89 years old. 89 in two weeks. Yeah. 88, and she lives for her family, which is awesome. Yeah, and she true. wakes up every day, goes and gets crabs. So. This can all happen. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, everybody. For making it all Everybody's possible. Everybody's welcome. Glad you're all here. <laughs>